There's no justification for setting things on fire and breaking into businesses and ruining lives. There's no justification for that. And you'll notice that you won't hear Stacey Abrams condemn the people who lit this Wendy's on fire. You won't hear that. You won't hear Stacey Abrams say, gee, you know what? As terrible as this tragedy was, maybe Rayshard Brooks shouldn't have resisted arrest. Maybe he shouldn't have taken the taser. You won't hear Stacey Abrams say that, will you? You and I have a rendezvous with destiny. We will preserve for our children this, the last best hope of man on earth. Or we will sentence them to take the first step into a thousand years of darkness. If we fail, at least let our children and our children's children say of us, we justified our brief moment here. We did all that could be done. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Veely TV. So I'm sure most of you have heard by now what happened this past weekend with Rayshard Brooks, uh, the African-American who was unfortunately shot in the back by police officers after he stole their taser and then was running away and turned around and aimed it at the officer. Um, and, you know, there's been a, a lot of dishonest reporting, quite frankly, um, about what happened uh, on that night uh, from people who are agenda-driven, from the left-wing media, from people who want to advance a narrative. They're more interested in, in advancing a narrative than they are at getting out the facts. So before I get into how the left-wing media is responding to this tragedy, um, I want to give you the facts. I want to tell you exactly what happened without any agenda, without any um, political angle whatsoever, because I watched the video of the incident. I watched it start to finish. Uh, start to finish. I know how it escalated. I know what happened. I know the ins and outs of it. And so I just kind of want to start by laying a foundation uh, with the facts. This is a situation that started off extremely calm and civil. It really did. Here was a man, Rayshard Brooks, who had fallen asleep uh, in a Wendy's drive through because he was intoxicated. And so the police come up, and by the way, this video is out there if you wanna if you wanna check it out. In fact, I encourage you to do so. The police officer comes up to the car, knocks on the window, and says, "Hey, what's going on?" Um, you know, just kind of wakes him up, is trying to figure out uh, what's going on. Brooks wakes up. Everything's civil. They're having a conversation. The police officer's civil. Rayshard Brooks is civil. Um, and then the cop eventually starts to perform a field sobriety test. And this goes on, as I understand it, for quite some time. Um, and the, the officer, in the meantime, calls in backup, and they find out that, yes, their suspicions were correct. Uh, Brooks was highly intoxicated. And so the police did what they normally do to everybody uh, in this sort of a situation. And if they, and this is where it goes beyond race, folks. I mean, if, if police officers come up uh, to a Wendy's drive through and they find anybody asleep because they're intoxicated in their car, regardless of whether they're white, black, brown, yellow, doesn't matter. They're going to do what they were trained to do, and that is, A, perform a field sobriety test, and B, if they are intoxicated, make the arrest. So that's what this officer did. After calling back up, he went to make the arrest. And as soon as they went to put the handcuffs on Brooks, this is when all hell broke loose. And uh, he began resisting arrest. And now it's a little bit difficult to tell from the video, but it looked like uh, Brooks swung a couple of times at the officers. Um, and he was just, as I said, resisting arrest. He was not not about to be put in handcuffs. And there's a, uh, there's a little bit of a scuffle. And Brooks ends up taking one of the officer's tasers uh, and then starts to run. And so the officers are chasing him through the Wendy's parking lot. And then Brooks turns at one point, and this is very, very apparent in the video. Brooks turns and aims the taser at the officer. And the second Brooks turns and aims the taser at the officer, the officers open fire. I believe it was two or three shots, and Brooks is down. And so that's how it went. It started off as a civil interaction. They performed a field sobriety test, as they would always do. Regardless of color, nothing racist here. Brooks resisted arrest, fought the officers, stole their taser, 
I, I believe discharged it at the officers while he was running, and the cops fired back. Those are the facts. That's what hap- That's what happened. Now, here's my take on the situation. Here's my take on the situation. Before I get into this dishonest reporting uh, from these left-wing media types and these left-wing politicians, here's my take on it. There needs to be accountability here on both sides. There needs to be accountability here on both sides. The officer probably didn't need to open fire. The officer probably did not need to open fire. This probably could have ended without bullets. I understand that Brooks stole the taser. I understand that Brooks discharged the taser. But the way I see it, the, the cop had other solutions at his disposal than firing his weapon. Now, granted, I was not in the situation. I was not this police officer. I don't know what this police officer was feeling. For all I know, he could have genuinely feared for his life. And so, you know, I, I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait till more facts come out about this. We're going to have to wait till more statements are made and so on and so forth. Witnesses come forward. We're going to have to wait till we get all the facts before we can, you know, decide, you know, whether or not this was justified, whether or not other actions could be taken. The way I see it right now is I don't think that this officer had to shoot him. Had to shoot him. Again, that's just my opinion looking as as an outsider. Um, But maybe he thought that's what was best in the situation. Again, I don't know. I'm not this officer. So I'm leaving, I'm kind of leaving that up in the air until, until we get more information. Now, on the other, on the flip side, Brooks shouldn't have resisted arrest. Brooks shouldn't have resisted arrest. And this is the part where I haven't heard any left wing nutjobs out there saying, saying this in the media or in Washington, D.C. I haven't heard any of them say what I'm about to say. And that is, Brooks shouldn't have been resisting arrest. In the first place, he shouldn't have been drinking and driving. If Brooks had just gone along with it, if he hadn't resisted arrest, if he hadn't stolen the taser, if he hadn't fired the taser at this officer, he wouldn't be dead. He'd be alive today. So that's what I mean But when I say that there needs to be accountability on both sides here. There needs to be accountability on both sides. Now let me raise another point. And this is very, very important, and it's going to lead into what I have to say next. This is absolutely nothing like what happened to George Floyd. This is nowhere near what happened to George Floyd a few weeks ago. In that case, that was a man who was on the ground, handcuffed, with an officer's knee on his throat for how long was it? Seven, eight minutes? He was yelling, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. And the officer didn't let up. The three officers that were with him didn't say, hey, maybe we should stop this. Um, That was horrible. That was a horrible, horrible tragedy. In this case, you had somebody who was not doing what he was supposed to be doing, was resisting arrest, stole the officer's weapon, and fired at him. And the police shot him, unfortunately. Again, I think it was two or three times. So let's not try to, you know, lump the two together. Let's not, because, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because I'm seeing and hearing a lot of leftists out there trying to lump these together and say, see, here's yet another example, just like a few weeks ago with George Floyd, of police brutality and, 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 uh, systemic racism in the police force. They're not the same case, folks. They're very, very different. Very, very different. I also don't think, folks, that this case with uh, Rayshard Brooks was an act of racism. I think what happened to George Floyd was, but I think there's some room for debate here with regards to Rayshard Brooks, that this might not have been race-related. I Again, I don't know. We got to wait till the facts come out. But the reason I say that is because this officer who discharged his weapon, who killed Rayshard Brooks... He knew what happened a few weeks ago to George Floyd. He knew that the country right now is up in arms. He knew of, you know, the riots that took place, the Black Lives Matter movement, and so on and so forth. He knew racial tensions were on the rise. 
And so my question is, why would he do this? If he was truly motivated by race here, if he was really out to get the black guy, why would he do this and put his entire life in jeopardy? He saw what happened to that other cop who killed George Floyd. You'd have to think that he would think, gee, I don't want to end up in that same situation, and he'd do everything in his power to avoid that. So again, I don't think this was racially driven. I don't. George Floyd, yes, I, I, I do think it was racially driven. This, I don't think so. But again, and I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, we're going to have to wait until the facts come out. So there's the foundation. That's what happened. Those are my initial thoughts. You can agree, disagree. Feel free to let me know in the, in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. Now, listen to how the leftists out there are, are framing this story. Okay. I just gave you the facts. I gave you both sides. I said both sides need to have some accountability in this. Listen to how the left wing are trying to frame this story. Stacey Abrams was on ABC's This Week with uh, George Stepanopoulos, that joke of a, uh, of a commentator. And Stacey Abrams said, quote, There was a man murdered because he was asleep in a drive-thru. Really? Is that why the man was murdered? Because he was asleep in a drive-thru? Are cops suddenly going after people sleeping in drive throughs and killing them? Watch this. We saw immediate, immediate taking responsibility last night in Atlanta. I want to ask you about that incident last over the weekend in Atlanta, the killing of 27-year-old Rayshard Brooks. Mayor uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms did speak out on this yesterday. Let's listen. While we have a police force full of men and women who work alongside our communities with honor, respect, and dignity, there has been a disconnect with what our expectations are and should be as it relates to interactions with our officers and the communities in which they are entrusted to protect. What a disconnect that is. She mentioned this the third time in the last two weeks she's had to review police video. And, and that is why you saw the reaction from protesters. That is why the, the virulence of anger remains. Uh, activists are necessarily calling into question what's actually being done. And, and by I the way, let me stop right there. This image that you see up on your screen, I'm sorry for the folks listening on Spotify, but for those of you watching on YouTube, this image up on the screen right now is the Wendy's that was set on fire not long after the incident. Why? What did Wendy's have to do with this? What did the employees who work there have to do with this? Absolutely nothing. And it's a damn shame that this is how some people respond. Keep watching say is that there is there's a legitimacy to this anger there's a legitimacy to this outrage let me stop there's no justification for this kind of a response there's no i don't care what happened there's no justification for setting things on fire and breaking into businesses and ruining lives there's no justification for that and you'll notice that you won't hear stacy abrams condemn the people who lit this wendy's on fire you won't hear that you won't hear Stacey Abrams say, gee, you know what? As terrible as this tragedy was, maybe Rayshard Brooks shouldn't have resisted arrest. Maybe he shouldn't have taken the taser. You won't hear Stacey Abrams say that, will you? No, you won't. You know why? Because she's agenda-driven. She's narrative-driven. That's all she cares about. One side of things. Don't pay attention to the other side. One side. Pay attention to my thoughts, my views, my agenda. 24-7, that's what she and many other Democrats in this country are about. In fact, most other Democrats in this country. Keep watching. A man was murdered because he was asleep in a drive through No, that's absolutely not true. Why do you tell lies? Why do you tell lies? The viewers of ABC's This Week with George Stepanopoulos lies. You're lying through your teeth. You know you're lying through your teeth, Stacey Abrams. He wasn't killed because he was in a drive through asleep in his car. He was killed, unfortunately, because he stole this officer's taser and went to fire at him. I think he actually did fire at him. That's why what happened happened. So don't try to, you know, twist this and make it out to be 
cops are bad, cops are racist, racist cops are just knocking on on doors of people who are uh, sleeping a drive-thru and killing them. That's not the case. This frustrates me, folks, because people like Stacey Abrams are dividing the country. They want this race war to happen, I'm telling you. They want this racial tension. They're doing nothing but making it ten times worse with their damn lies. Keep watching. And we know that this is not an isolated occurrence. We also know that a man taking a taser from a police officer in Pennsylvania resulted in his arrest. But because this person was black, it resulted in his death. All right, let's stop. I can't speak for what happened in Pennsylvania. I don't know the case, but police officers respond differently. Police officers are human beings. Police officers are individuals. So that's a poor example. And quite frankly, I'm I'm shocked that she's even saying this on national television. Well, some white guy stole a taser and he was just arrested in Pennsylvania, but some black guy steals a taser and he's shot. So there you go. Systemic racism in the police force. Uh, No, not necessarily. Maybe the situations were different. Maybe the cops who were involved, uh, you know, in the Pennsylvania incident felt a little less threatened than the cops did in uh, in Georgia uh, with Richard Brooks. I mean, there's so many factors that she's not even considering because she's agenda-driven. A little bit more. Those are conversations that have to be had not only through speeches, but through the decisions made by budget allocations. And I think that's the next conversation we have to have in Atlanta. Well, yeah. Budget allocations, huh? A.K.A. defund the cops. A.K.A. you know what? Maybe we shouldn't give them as much money as we have been giving them. Maybe, you know what? Maybe, maybe we should consider dismantling the cops. Oh, yes! That's a genius idea. Why don't we just dismantle the cops? Get rid of the cops. That'll make all the problems go away, right? Unbelievable, folks. The dishonesty. There was another article that I was going to get to, but I'm running low on time before the break. Look it up for yourself. I'll read a little bit. It's an editorial written by the LA Times editorial board. Listen to the headline. Atlanta police killed a black man for being drunk at Wendy's. Is that why he was killed? Is that why he was killed? Because he was drunk at Wendy's? No. No, and and by the way, they have to make sure that they state it was a black man killed at a Wendy's for being drunk. The dishonesty is astonishing. And these are just two examples. This has been the the narrative from the left, starting with, uh, well, going further back than George Floyd, but continuing through the George Floyd case, and now with Rayshard Brooks, and it's not going to stop there. Trust me, this is their narrative. This is what they do. This is what they do. Cops bad. Cops racist. Dis- defund the cops. Dismantle the cops. Everyone's out to get blacks in this country. Everyone's out to get African Americans in this country. This country is built on racism. I don't buy it. I'm sorry. I don't buy it. I'm not excusing the case of uh, uh, George Floyd. I'm not even excusing the case of Rayshard Brooks. But I am saying that I don't think there's systemic racism in the police force. I don't think there's systemic racism in our DNA, in this country. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I'll be right back. Now you'll notice, folks, how all of these crises that are occurring in this country whether it's the riots that were taking place uh, and before that, the coronavirus, everything somehow trickles back to Donald Trump for the left. That is to say, everything is Donald Trump's fault. The coronavirus. Well, Donald Trump didn't act fast enough. Well, had it not been for Donald Trump's incompetence, they say, then thousands and thousands of lives could have been saved. With regards to the riots, well, you know, if Donald Trump wasn't such a racist, if Donald Trump wasn't such a bigot, then this wouldn't be happening. Then George Floyd would still be alive. Then Rayshard Brooks wouldn't be alive. Well, Donald Trump, Donald Trump, we got to get Donald Trump. He's the problem here. Really? I don't think so. But it's funny, folks, isn't it? 
And it's not a coincidence, by the way, how everything comes back to Donald Trump. Because, and that's, that's 100% intentional. 100% intentional. They hate this man. They despise everything he stands for. And so every single crisis that arises, they're going to somehow bring back to Donald Trump. He's a bad guy. He's a mastermind behind all this. That's what they do. That's what they do. Now, I want to play another video for you. This is from... This is going to be tough, but we'll get through it. Meet the Press. They had a panel on. And they were talking about, hey, can Donald Trump play a role in police reform in this country? Can Donald Trump really play a role in easing racial tensions in this country? And not surprisingly, all these leftists on this panel said, no, Donald Trump, he can't, he can't play a role in the solution. He can't do anything about this. No, 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 he's completely incompetent. Now listen to this panel before I play the video. They head on, uh, this is with Chuck Todd. Or as I like to call him, Up Chuck Todd for obvious reasons. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I can't read. Casey Hunt. Boy, my eyesight's going. <laughs> Casey Hunt, NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent. Uh, Helene Cooper, New York Times Pentagon correspondent. And Tim Alberta, Politico Chief Political Correspondent. So we had a lineup of fools, really. A, a circus on television. Um, all leftists, all people who are out to get Donald Trump. And that's blatantly obvious in the way they speak. In the way they frame what's going on. Now pay attention to how, again, they bring everything back to Donald Trump. Everything's Donald Trump's fault. Listen, we'll see how far we can get at this. Tim Alberta, you wrote about... Uh, the phrase law and order and how it doesn't have the same meaning politically anymore on the right. You know, Chuck, it, it doesn't. And obviously, you know, post-2012, Republicans began to have this conversation about how do we soften the image of the party? How do we expand our appeal into these non-traditional communities? And, and they talked a lot about immigration reform and some other issues, but they didn't talk really at all about uh, this issue of, you know, systemic injustice and, and institutional racism and, and police disproportionately targeting uh, and brutalizing the African-American community. And you, know, you know what's funny is that these people talk about systemic racism and systemic discrimination and all the rest, and yet they're out there talking in some cases about taking down Confederate flags and Confederate statues, renaming uh, you know military bases who have been named after Confederate leaders, as if this is some kind of solution. They talk about defunding the police, dismantling the police, as if, as if that's some kind of solution. So don't, you know, attack Republicans and say, well, they're not doing enough. What the hell are you guys doing on the left? Absolutely nothing. What are you doing? Well, we're going on Meet the Press and we're talking about it to Chuck Todd. That is a conversation that is now taking place inside the Republican Party in a way that was really unimaginable. And by the way, this guy, Tim Alberta, is a nut. He's a nut. Keep watching. A few years ago. And so I think regardless of the outcome this November, uh, the writing is really clearly on the wall for a lot of these Republicans now. The polling is just remarkable. Frank Luntz spoke to it earlier this week. He said, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've never seen public opinion move so quickly. Carl Rove spoke to it in my piece. All right, there stop. Carl Rove's an idiot, too, by the way. But... You know, what What kills me is that they're still trying to convince us that Donald Trump's going to lose in November because the polls say so. You know, I was kind of a poll guy before the 2016 election. I'd follow the polls. I'd read them. I'd take them into, into consideration. But after the 2016 election, when all these polls out there that were being touted by the left-wing media said Hillary Clinton's going to win in a landslide, she has a 99.9999% chance of winning, the polls said. And then Donald Trump won. After that happened, I couldn't give two Fs, got to censor myself, about the polls. I couldn't. I couldn't. So I don't, I don't buy a word of what this moron's saying. About these polls. Oh, Donald Trump's going to lose. All these experts saying, Donald Trump's going to lose. He's down in the polls. Don't buy it, folks. Don't buy it. Keep watching. There is 
sort of a clear line of delineation that the spring of 2020 represents for Republicans. And they recognize that regardless of what the president is saying or doing, that they need to address this issue moving forward in order to be competitive, in order to get a foot in the door with some of these communities. And I guess, Helene, the question is, is whether the president this whether woman's he a can nut too. play a role that's constructive here or not. I want to play, first of all, I want to play two excerpts from the president. One just this week to, to, to Fox News about Abe Lincoln. Take a listen. I think I've done more for the black community than any other president. And let's take a pass on Abraham Lincoln because he did good, although it's always questionable. You know, in other words, the end result. Well, we are free, Mr. President. But he, we he are did free. pretty well. You understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm going to take a pass on Abe, Abe, honest Abe, as we call Which, him. So what, what was wrong with what he just said there, by the way? They're using this clip to attack Trump. What was wrong with what he just said? He said he's done more than arguably any other president for the black community. I think there's a strong argument to be made that yes, he is. And he said, save for Abe Lincoln. So excluding Abe Lincoln. What I mean, what the hell is the controversy there? Now they're going to play another clip that they dug up somehow from, I believe, 1989. See, this is the type of news that we get nowadays. This isn't news. This isn't journalism. This is crap, is what it is. Complete crap. When I'm walking through my lawn on like a Tuesday afternoon and I step in some of my uh, my dog's, you know, excrement, and I look at the bottom of my shoe, that's what this is. That's Meet the Press. Keep watching. And, and Helene, before you respond, I want to also play, because I think one of the challenges for this president is that this is... This has been a long history of having one view about race. Listen to this quote from, the, uh, from 1989. A well-educated black has a tremendous advantage over a well-educated white in terms of the job market. If I were starting off today, I would love to be a well-educated black because I really believe they do have an actual advantage today. Again, what's the problem with that? I don't get the controversy. I don't even know the point they're trying to make. But now this Helene Cooper, again, she's a New York Times Pentagon correspondent, is going to speak. She's an absolute idiot. An absolute clown. Watch. It's sort of a similar question I had to Tim Scott is, is, you know, can the president, because of his history, even his sort of his recent instincts here, can he play a constructive role without sort of acknowledging Why wouldn't he be able to? Uh, views that he had in the past that no longer seem to be mainstream? Um, I have an easy answer for that. No, uh, I don't see how President Trump can play any kind of constructive role in what's going on right now uh, in this movement for change because of who he is. I mean, oh, I wish right. you had the face palm emoji uh, for when you were playing that uh, that tape of him on Fox News just now talking about Abraham Lincoln. That was that was insane. That's very Trump. I mean, he thinks he's Nothing always insane talking about, about it. how much he's done for the black community. But as you Trump see- has done a lot for the black community. Trump has done quite a bit for the black community. He's working with inner cities. He's gotten unemployment, black unemployment down to record lows. Don't tell me these lies that Donald Trump's not doing anything. I know it fits your narrative that Donald Trump is bad for the black community, Helene Cooper, but it's not true. I know you're comfortable with your lies, but it's not true. Keep watching. See from his actions, and you can see from the actions of the administration, that's what actually untrue. There's nobody in their right mind that can make that defense uh, or even that. I just did. President Trump. Deal and- with it. When you look at what he did, for instance, I mean, I've been so focused this past week on the military and what's been going on between right. President Trump and the military. But when you look at what he did on Confederate bases, when he he immediately slammed down uh, uh, Pentagon efforts to start talking and they weren't even saying we're absolutely right. going to do it. They were they had started in such an, an anemic way. We're going to start a bipartisan commission to talk about changing these uh, right. Confederate base names. And Trump shut that down immediately. And he let, let me stop. What would what would that solve? What would that solve? What I, I mean, how many lives would that improve? Would it do anything? Changing the names of these uh, Confederate or these military bases? What what? How is that a solution? For God's sakes, I don't blame Trump for shutting that down. It's stupid. It's completely irrelevant. 
well, we're going to take down the Confederate statues and the Confederate flag, and we're going to rename these uh, military bases and so forth. That'll fix things. Uh, really? No, it won't. No, it won't. And then you know what's going to happen? Even if we did do that, you know what? Even if we took down every Confederate statue in, in, in the country, even if we banned all Confederate flags, you know what would happen? A, there would still be racial tension in certain pockets of the country. And B, the Democrats would say, well, you know, we haven't done enough. Well, well, you know, we haven't done enough. You know why? Because it's never enough for these losers. It's never enough for people like Helene Cooper. Completely irrelevant. Stupid. Keep watching. And senior military officials who were just ready to throw their hands up in the air. So it's like the idea that this is the guy who's going to play a constructive role in, in, in this movement for change in the United States, I think is preposterous. T Tim Alberta, I, is the president misreading his own base? I think he instinctively assumes his base is going to rise up on this Confederate uh, name change thing. See, now they're going to tell us and tell Donald Trump what he needs to do in order to win back his base. Yeah, yeah, because Donald Trump, as we all know, in 2016, he only won because he listened to the mainstream media and did everything that they suggested. All these experts. He, Donald Trump really listened to Chuck Todd and meet the, meet the press panels, and that's how he won in 2016. He listened to the advice of the media. You kidding me? I, I don't fully see it the way uh, that way do you you know it's at the margins chuck as with everything else the president does i think he has such a myopic focus on his base that he doesn't recognize that politics is a coalition business and that a lot of the votes that helped get him across the finish line in 2016 were coming from wealthy affluent two-car garage suburbs where voters are not only um not only turned off by his rhetoric around race, but specifically when you get to issues of the Confederate flag or when you get to these protests in NFL stadiums, these are voters who culturally have drifted further and further from these traditional Republican positions of orthodoxy. And, and now right. the president has a choice to make heading toward November. It's, you know, do you begin to soften ever so slightly? Do you modulate some of your positions, understanding that yeah. you can't afford to bleed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to stop right there. That's what Donald Trump has to do. Folks, Tim Alberta has the answer. Donald Trump just needs to modulate some of his positions. He needs to go a little bit more to the center. He needs to compromise a little bit more, don't you know? Because that, right, right. That's what he did in 2016, right? He listened to the media. He listened to idiots like Tim Alberta and Chuck Todd. And he said, you know what? I'm going to win by going to the center, by modulating some of my positions. That's how we won, right? He took the advice of the media, right? No, that's not what happened. It's not what happened at all. Donald Trump's probably looking at clips like this, watching these idiots on TV, laughing himself silly. Honest to God, it's just, it's so pathetic. What's really pathetic, folks, is that these people still think they're relevant. These people still think they're relevant. They're out there saying, look, Donald Trump needs to do this if he wants to win over his base. They are so out of touch. They have absolutely no idea um, how much Donald Trump's base support their president. They have no idea. They don't get it. They don't get it. They didn't get it in 2016. They don't get it in 2020. Some things never change. But what I will say, folks, and let me leave you at this. All these attacks on Donald Trump, you know, framing the coronavirus. Oh, Donald Trump's fault. Framing these riots. Oh, it's Donald Trump's fault. We've seen nothing yet. Mark my words. These next five months up until the election... Uh, Donald Trump's going to be dragged through the dirt, or at least they're going to try to drag him through the dirt. Just brace yourself for it. Just brace yourself for it. We're going to see the media slandering him left and right, even more so. I mean, it's going to be like they're on steroids. We're probably going to see some kind of BS October surprise to try to harm Donald Trump. It's going to be absolute hell. And so we as conservatives need to be ready to push back the liberal hordes. I'll be here on Beely TV. I'll be here on uh, TikTok making fun of the leftists like only I can do. 
Uh, and I encourage you to follow me on TikTok, by the way, if you haven't already. Or subscribe, and I should say, not or, subscribe on YouTube and check out my other videos. I'd really, really appreciate it. Hey, there's an audio-only version available of this uh, show on Spotify. Just go on Spotify and type in Veely TV. All the episodes are, are archived there. Give it a listen. I, I really encourage that. We're also working on getting this show up on uh, on iTunes and on uh, SoundCloud as well. So look forward to that. That is coming soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you Thursday for episode five. God bless. God bless.